Welcome back to guest tutorial number two, my viewers. This is the second part, where we will finish the last two objectives that I left hanging. Check the card above if you didn't watch part one. So here's an update from part one related to my unsuccessful implementation of Destiny Knot mechanics. I tried some more, but I still couldn't get anything to work, which really sucks, but there's not much I can do about it. Also, I'm going to remind you all, before continuing with the last exercise, don't forget to back up your ROM before making major changes. Just in case if you don't like the changes, you don't have to redo a lot of other changes that were unrelated. Without further ado, let's continue. Let's up the ante with this thumb routine. This one's useful for further customizing trainers. This post is actually located in another thread related to binary ROM hacking, which I'll link in the description. Help threads and useful things can also be located in the ROM hacking resources thread. To save time, I'll also link this post in the description as well as cut to it. This thread contains the respective thumb code that you can insert in Fired 1.0 and Emerald. Extra information about what's being inserted and information about a table that will be inserted. It's the table you saw in the very beginning of part 1. There is also information about natures, but we have ways to avoid memorizing them. What this code does specifically is create a database of builds that you can give to trainer Pokemon. Each entry in the table can have a custom set of EVs, natures, etc. To assign an entry to an individual Pokemon, the code will hijack the IVs field so that whatever value is set there will correspond to the ID of the EVs nature IV spread that you desire. So I'm going to insert the code for Emerald. The process is going to be a little different this time, as there are multiple places to put a thumb code, and for this tutorial, we will do things one at a time. First, I will copy the first address in the .org directive and paste it into the Go To menu. Now, I can copy these thumb instructions. What's important, however, is how many bytes to overwrite in the ROM. Because you're editing vanilla game code, you will want to make sure that you don't mess up something else that's supposed to stay intact. So, each thumb instruction, with a few exceptions, is 2 bytes long. Since there are 3 of them, we would need to select 6 bytes. In HMA, I will do just that. You can keep track of how many bytes are selected by looking at the length field at the bottom. Now I'll just select the thumb instructions that came up, and overwrite them by pasting what I copied. Next up is another miniature segment of thumb code. I will copy this thumb code and go to the next address, which is 3896C. In terms of what to select in HMA, there are two thumb instructions, which amount to 4 bytes, but there's also this line that has a dot word, instruction, and a memory address. That is 4 bytes long, so if we add the memory address in the two thumb commands, we get a total of 8 bytes. I select 8 bytes, paste the code, and everything worked out like a magic trick. You can change this F90001 pointer to a different address on the ROM if you want. That has free space of course, and is divisible by 4. However, I will keep the address, and instead convert it to a pointer with a plus 1. There is one more miniature section that has one thumb instruction, and thus I will need to select two more bytes. And I make the change the same way I did the other changes. Here's where we get to the meat of the code. Everything after .org F90000 can all be inserted as one chunk. This contains the new mechanics that you can have enemy trainers take advantage of. I'm now going to copy all of this code and navigate back to Hexmanic Advance. I will now go to this address by default, make sure that the code tool is active and set to thumb, and paste. We move the dot align to directive as we don't need it. And now this address in particular links to another table which we will have to fill in. You can use a different address in free space. If this one doesn't work out, just make sure you edit it here or in the hex content viewer. There's actually another piece I can add to this puzzle from the thread itself. If you want to add customizable abilities, don't click off yet. What I'll do is go back to the forum post, go to page 2, and scroll down to this post. Afterwards, copy the code and paste it after load ball. It's section of thumb code specifically. So now, similar to a previous exercise, there are actually two lines of thumb code 
that will not compile correctly due to XMake Advance, not recognizing them. Both of them are EOR commands. There isn't an intuitive solution given by the creator of the thread, so I'll just give it to you. All you need to do is remove the final R1 in both of those commands, and the code will compile correctly. Now we're going to go to the next phase, which is setting up a table to go along with the new code. This pointer, which I'm selecting right now, points to the address at which we will set up the table. To make things easier later on, I will fill part of the region with 0, zero bytes before adjusting the table format. Next, I'm going to give this table a name. I named it EV spreads and I nested it under the misc subdirectory, using periods to separate stuff. When setting up the table layout, follow my instructions carefully. The forum post actually has a rough roadmap for where the different fields go in the table, except the ability slot, but we'll get to that. So I start the table format with a left bracket, then I make a nature field by typing the word, followed by a colon to reserve two bytes. Well, technically it reserves one, but I'll put two for readability's sake. Then I will put an unused field that reserves two bytes, so that the next field is on the fifth column. Next is the IVs field, but this time I'll put a period after it so that it reserves one byte, Next are the EVs for the six different stats, and it must go in the order of HP, Attack, Defense, Speed, Special Attack, and Special Defense, all with periods after each field because they also reserve one byte. After the Special Defense EV field, I will add one field for the Pokeball, shortened to Ball, and then there's the Ability field, more specifically the Ability slot, which can only be either 0 or 1. Both will have periods at the end to reserve one byte each. Finally, to round out the table formatting, I put an unused field at the end so that the table has 16 columns, which is what the thumb code expects. I used a combination of a colon and period so that it reserves 3 bytes. This table is 256 entries long at maximum, so I type 256 at the end. Once I close the brackets before the 256, all of the bytes on screen will be formatted according to how I set up the table. Now you can put information in the database in the hex content viewer here or on the table tool, which is on the left. To mitigate the need to memorize the IDs of natures and pokeballs, we can edit the table formatting again so that some of the numbers show up as names of those attributes. After the colon in the nature field, I can type data.pokemon.natures.names and you'll see nature names instead of numbers for the most part. The other QOL change you can make is if I head over to the ball field, I can put data.items.stats after the period, and first you'll see question marks, but I can change those to things like the Ultra Ball or the Great Ball, so that the trainer sends out a particular Pokemon with a different ball. As for the ability slot, your only options for a particular Pokemon are the Pokemon's first ability slot, which you would put 0 for, or the second ability slot, in which you'd put 1. For instance, Lantern's abilities are Volt Absorb and Illuminate, in that order. If I want an opposing Lantern to have Volt Absorb, I would need an ability slot of 0. Likewise, it would be 1 for Illuminate. Now we can start messing around with the database even further. This Timid build can have 31 IVs in all stats, as well as 252 EVs in Special Attack and Special Defense, and 4 HP EVs. If you really want to be sadistic, you can max out the EVs in more than 2 stats, as you're not limited by the game's 510 EV cap here. With these tools at your disposal, you can pretty much make any competitive build that you want. Now we will cover assigning these to a Pokemon. Now in the TomL file, which is in the same place as your ROM, also with the same name, there's this line called show raw IV bite for trainer, which will correctly account for the change in how the trainer Pokemon's IV fields work once you set it to true. Now that I've done that, I can save changes and go back to the ROM. So I'm going to give a trainer a level 21 Grovile to match my level 21 Grovile. So here's the key thing, this IVs field. Now that we hijacked it, this thing will now use the EV slash IV slash nature spread with the ID of 100. I changed said value to zero to match that if we go back to the EV spreads table, it will match this line of the table with the ID of 0 as shown where my mouse cursor is. I did put another EV spread in the table, but I changed my mind about using it. 
Now we will test all of this in a battle to make sure that the enemy grow vial will always outspeed my grow vial. I will use save states to change the outcome of the first turn every time. And you're going to notice, albeit a small sample size, that the foe grow vial will outspeed me without held items from both sides nor a speed tie. As I discussed in part 1, I proved that the outcomes of every turn are not predetermined right away, so it can't be that the grow vial is always winning a speed tie. Lastly, the opposing grow vial speed stat would be 56 with max IVs and a plus speed nature. My grow vial speed stat is much lower. Also, the game didn't crash, which is always a great thing. So the last thing on the menu is some tips for fixing problems with inserted thumb code. Many of these have been referenced earlier in the tutorial, but I will put them all together here. The first thing you need to make sure is that when you're implementing a thumb routine, you're using the ROM that the thumb routine is intended for. Most routines that are for Fire Red, for instance, are for Fire Red 1.0, not 1.1. You can use these SHA-1 hashes as a reference to check if your ROM is the right version, provided you have, say, a clean Fire Red 1.0 ROM, if that's what your ROM hack is based off of. Also, most things online are for English ROMs, not ROMs in other languages. Thus, if you were to use a non-English ROM, you could be inserting stuff at wrong addresses and have issues. To check if you have the right SHA-1 hash for a ROM, have it open and click File and calculate common hashes. You can see that if I compare this SHA-1 hash to the one in this text file, they match. So I can reasonably infer that my Emerald ROM that I was using should work for thumb routines that were intended for Emerald. If it turns out that you have the wrong version of a ROM or the wrong language, then you're kind of out of luck. Sorry. So that was my first tip for troubleshooting issues with thumb code. Here comes the next tip. When you insert thumb code, it must be placed in an address that's divisible by 4. So any address that ends with 0, ends with 4, ends with 8, or ends with C are all fair game. Other columns won't work and could cause the game to crash instead. However, if you're instructed to call thumb code from another address using commands like these, which would compile to the bytes you would see on the right panel, the pointer to the thumb code needs to have a plus one at the end. So you could replace the last zero with a one or the last four with a five and so on. So it would actually point to the B5 or the B4 byte that's used in a push instruction. Or, and you'd have to do this in the hex content viewer, the pointer can be the actual address of the thumb code and you would put a plus one at the end. And the pointer would be before the B5 or B4 byte. Either way works. After making sure that your segments of thumb code are at the right addresses, Make sure you don't mix up the hex digits of other addresses. So here's one of my old Poke community posts where I had troubles trying to implement the tinted lens ability. At first, no matter what I did, I didn't know what was going wrong. And if you look over here, there is an instruction that says, insert a couple of bytes at 1EFAC. If I remembered correctly, when I first tried to implement this ability, I tried to manually type it in in HMA but then I realized I mixed up the F and E. In cases like those, you would be inserting bytes that would override something else in the ROM, meaning that you can unknowingly corrupt something else. This is why backups are so important. Also, this is why I now like to copy the addresses instead of typing them in and doing so before copying code. You want to make sure that the modifications go in exactly where they're supposed to be. So that about covers it for that specific tip. The next tip involves filling in numbers directly in the thumb code that you were inserting. Also within this Poke community post, the thumb code that I had to copy also had comments and a 0xxx parameter instead of a number to represent Tinted Lens's ability slot. So before clicking off of the thumb code, after copy pasting it, you need to find the right IDs for the moves, abilities, etc. And you can supply these numbers in base 10 without the 0x. It's also possible that the thumb code might have a preset number to compare to that ends up corresponding to an ability ID or whatnot. In that case, changing the number is the same process, but there might be more trial and error involved. Something similar can happen to other abilities like motor drive. And towards the end of the thumb code segment, you see a dot word 08. Uh which is more of a dummy slash filler address. And below it says that this address refers to a battle script you also have to insert. 
What I'm trying to say is that in this case you can put the battle script pretty much anywhere you want in free space, but you'll need to change the address on the thumb code to account for it. If you don't make such corrections and give HMA like what's effectively syntax errors, then the thumb code won't compile correctly. All in all, keep your eyes peeled for comments that tell you that some things may change depending on your individual ROM hack. In addition, also keep an eye out on the NOP instruction, which usually indicates that something went wrong when compiling. Hexmanic Advance is a newer tool and it's not perfect, so there might be some older syntaxes for thumb commands that it doesn't recognize. For instance, the aforementioned EOR instruction with three registers. If you see in the code tool, the top and bottom versions compiled correctly, but the middle two are remaining as 0000, 000, 000 bytes, which are NUPS. If you found thumb code online that has such commands which compile correctly in other tools but not in HMA, you might have to compile the thumb code in another tool to find out what bytes those instructions compiled to, which you can then use for reference later. You can also leave a message in the Discord's bug reports channel. If you went through these avenues of troubleshooting and you still haven't figured out what's causing the problem, then you might need to seek help on Discord, Poke Community, or other online outlets. You have a chance of getting an answer and or solution from someone who's an expert at thumb code, the creator of a specific thumb code segment, and or someone else who has used it and had the same issue or knows how to solve your problem. If you guys have more tips for handling thumb code that isn't working, you can leave them in the comments. We're done! That was quite the long tutorial, even after splitting it up. It just goes to show how intricate thumb code is and how you have to be careful with how you insert it to your ROM. Remember, most of these were made before HMA was being developed, so we have to adapt and make adjustments here and there. Regardless, I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial as you can potentially enhance your ROM hack with several thumb routines from places like Poke Community, as long as you, of course, give credit where credit is due. If you feel that something's off with how HMA processes thumb code, Feel free to file a bug report in our Discord server, which is linked in the description. You can also ask questions there or in the comments if you feel uneasy with the exercises I've covered. Thank you all for your support throughout this past year. It's been a pleasure making these tutorials for the ROM hacking community, but alas, I'll have to step aside for now. I'm not going to quit making them, but I'll be less active going forward. Either way, take good care of yourselves, my viewers.